Hello everyone, photographer Andre Designs here with a new retouch video. Alright, so this image was taken with the Nikon D750 as you can see on the screen. The lens I was actually using is a 85mm 1.8 lens. For the um, exposure, I was basically using um, 1 over 320 second. Um, the ISO was at 400. I'm not even sure why my ISO was at 400. Normally my ISO would actually be at 100 or 64. Not sure what was happening on that day, but it was actually overcast. But I didn't think that's the reason why it was at um, 400. That's strange. Anyway, I'm going to edit this image right now. Okay, so the image is not 100% uh, well it seems as if I was focusing somewhere else on the model's face um, because her eyes aren't in focus and normally you'd aim for the model's eye to ensure that um, it's in focus but that's fine so the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to the action panel here because as you know um, I have my own actions if you've been watching my videos and you can download these actions for free by using the link in the description alright so I'm gonna go right ahead and click the frequency separation action I am gonna put this at 6 radius at 6 and see what difference it makes if it does make any difference at all and um, I'm working on the low frequency layer and you would select your mixer brush the mixer brush is normally on the brushes so you click hold on on brush and you should see the mixer brush at the bottom I believe for the mixer brush ensure that you clear the brush the brush should be um, yeah cleared and once it's cleared I, I believe this will be highlighted uh, your wetness should be at 2% and everything should remain the same alright so with my mixer brush what I'm going to do is just to flatten some sections of the model's face so I can actually um, remove stuff from it or to keep the texture in the model's skin All right. there are times that you really don't need to mix a certain area of the model's face because um, it actually does not need any mixing <laughs> especially if the model's face is clean um, sometimes all you have to do is just to remove the blemishes and that's it but if you still want to go ahead and um, just even out the entire skin the entire face you can just go right ahead and do that alright so I'm just gonna get the mixer brush um, well it's already selected alright so I'm just gonna be as detailed as possible with the technique alright so for example um, if you notice I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen but um, if you notice right here is light and right here is dark I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen but these are some of the reasons why you use the mixer brush to kinda uh, you know blend everything together so if you look on the image now let's look at the before and after see so it blends the skin basically so there are times that you know there are times you still have to use it even if the model's face is clean um, you still need to even out the model's skin alright so I'm just gonna come down to the nose just that as well to the side of the nose alright let's look at it before and after for that before and after so under the eye where you have the eye bog right there the eye bug uh, all right let me just flatten that a little bit once you flatten the the bag under the eye it's easier for you to remove it so it's a good practice to um, flatten that as well so if you notice I'm just skipping over some sections of the face because uh, I really don't need to blend that section I normally blend the section that has pimples and also um, uh, because it was raining I believe this is a a raindrop from the tree because we're under a tree all right good so I'm gonna do here as well right here just 
just gonna come down to the back of the model all right just come down here and honestly I didn't necessarily need to come down here and do anything but I mean it won't hurt I'm gonna go down to the models hand and where the veins are I'm just going to um blend out those as well all right so that's it for that all right so you can also blend the clothing as well for example these um wrinkles right here i'm just going to use the left the right bracket you can just blend them in so you can um remove them easier with the with whatever with whatever tool you're going to use to remove them so Let's look at it before and after. Before, after. Good. This mark right here. I'm just going to remove it. So you see how powerful the mixer brush is. <laughs> it's not only for the skin. You can use it on the clothing as well. Alright, so that's it for that. What I'm going to do now is to start removing blemishes from the skin. So I'm going to go over to the high frequency layer and I'm going to select the um, patch tool. Normally I would select the, um, as a matter of fact, no, I'm not going to select the patch tool yet. I'm going to use the, I'm going to press S on my keyboard for the clone stamp tool and then I'm just going to remove the water the drop from her face oh this should be at a hundred percent so I'm just sampling a area of the model's face just to match it with the area I'm trying to cover so I'm gonna zoom up some more and get my brush a little bit smaller uh, it's good to keep the brush small uh, if the pimple is small you the brush should be small if the pimple is large, I mean, try to match the size with the brush itself. Because there are times you may have patches on the skin because um, the brush is too big. Than, it's, the, the brush is too bigger than the, um, the pimple. So I always, you know, think about doing that. So I'm going to remove the bag from on the model's eye and I'm, I'm just sampling right here. I'm holding down on Alt on the keyboard and I'm sampling. So you see how big the brush is? And then I'm just going to do that. Just wipe it right under the eye. I'm going to do the same thing over here, but I'm going to clean right here first. I'm just going to sample right here and then go right under. Stop right under. And then I'm going to sample here again and I'm going to do the same thing right here. Good. Just like that. Uh, get it smaller and then I'm going to remove these as well. I'm going to remove this one as well. And all I'm doing is just Alt, Sample, Paint. Alt, Sample, Paint. Alright, that looks good. Good. Alright, let's look at the before and after now for the face. So before and after all right that's how easy it is all right so i'm going to come down i'm going to remove this so to remove this what i am going to do is get my patch tool and i'm going to just select it and then i'm going to press um, shift on the keyboard and then backspace and that will give me content aware and content aware will just select a section of the the image just to remove that I didn't it didn't do a great job but let me see if I can just move it oh I have an idea I'm just gonna select the low arm um, layer and then I'm going to move it down or move it up actually down is better so I'm just gonna undo move it down wait I have to do this over again what's happening oh wrong layer so to apply this again then I'm gonna go down and then move it down 
good all right so i have to clean up this now so i'm gonna go back to the top frequency layer and then go to the clone stamp and then i'm just gonna paint i'm not seeing anything happening what's happening uh just strange all right nothing is happening i'm just going to ma i'm just going to um merge everything and then create a new uh not sure why i'm getting errors but i'm just going to create a new one I'm gonna put it at six again. Good. Then I'm going to go back to the high frequency layer and then I'm just going to sample and paint. Not sure what happened just now. Let's see if I can sample a bigger. All right, that looks good actually no let me just all right this is this is this is something i don't really like doing when i am actually th there are times i rather not using the frequency separation to remove stuff like this because it gives a lot of problem so sometimes uh, what i do is to just create a copy of the um the image and then i'll just work on the raw image itself just gonna lower the opacity so you see um most time when i'm doing editing um it's not easy <laughs> for some images still have issues all right i'm just gonna paint in because i'm not sure what's happening with that i'm just gonna paint the um so I'm, i created a new layer and i'm on the brush i'm just gonna sample right here and then i'm just gonna paint it in i need to put this the flow at about uh 40 percent 47 percent i'm just gonna paint it in then i'm just gonna lower the opacity to about right there and then painting the rest good all right if you notice you're seeing a green um um thing around the image this is caused by the lens itself it's called chromatic abrasion um i'm going to show you how to remove that as well but normally if the lens is cheap <laughs> um you know you'll actually get that um fringing from the um the lens itself the more expensive lens you they have um a technology in it that will not actually cause the chromatic um abrasion so um it's something that you can remove but it's best to buy the more expensive lens if you don't want to do a lot of editing i don't mind it and i'm definitely going to get the 1.4 85 millimeter lens but i'm just not sure when i'm going to get it but um yeah that's it for that portion of the editing i am going to show you guys how to remove it though but um i've never removed it in um photoshop before uh but i'm, I'm gonna try i'm gonna try to use the same principle in lightroom to remove it and there are times i don't even remove it if it does not if it's not too bright i don't even touch it but let's go back to the editing so i'm just gonna um create a new frequency separation um action again our layer i'm now at 10 for the radius and i'm just going to go to the high frequency layer and then go to my patch tool the patch tool is normal under the healing brush i took mine out and i'm just going to get rid of these lines um in the model's dress or from the model's dress basically i'm just fading them out i'm not sure what she sat on but we have some dirt right there i don't remember so we're just gonna remove that 
and because we did the mixing it's easier to remove these things from the clothing all right that looks good i'm just going to remove this watermark from right here it doesn't necessarily have to look perfect i mean you know what you're actually comfortable with you do what you're comfortable with once it's not distracting it should be good all right not sure if i wanted to remove this ah that's gonna be too much work i'm not gonna remove that that's gonna stay all right what i could do i could just maybe um use the clone stamp tool to get rid of it let's do that i'm gonna get a clone stamp tool and get rid of it right now and again, I really don't like to use a cone stamp tool to remove things from the clothes from the clothing um, using the frequency separation action because there are times it just does not work properly and I don't know why. <laughs> but um, I think I'm finished with doing using that. So I'm just going to create a new layer. So that's uh, control shift alt E to create a new layer. And then I'm just going to create another one by Control J. Wait. And then I'm just going to use a clone stamp tool and get rid of the watermark. See, it works better when you work on the image itself. The good thing about me, well, the thing about me when I'm editing, I, I don't like using um, smart objects. I like to work on the raw image itself. So you might be saying that, hey, all what you've done earlier is gone what if you want to make a change honestly it's not a good practice but i am always comfortable with every changes that i've made with my images so i most times i don't really need to go back and most times i don't go back so um that's not an issue for me but if you if you since you're learning now or not all of you well since you're learning now it's best to not you know work on the image itself because you might have issues and then you may have to do everything over again because not all the time everything will be saved in your history so you have to be mindful of that but when you work like this it gives Photoshop less work you know and it moves faster so when you have a lot of layers here I believe it takes a long time to work Alright, so the next step now is to do dodge and burning. One of my favorite things. So remember, you can download the action in the description. And um, yeah, it's absolutely free. Alright, so the burning now. Basically, I'm going to follow what the makeup artist did. I believe she did her own makeup as well. So I'm on burn right now. And I'm going to select the brush, B for the brush. And then 1% for the flow. And I'm just going to darken right here to give the nose a shape right there as well right here right here that's it nothing else i need to do that's done <laughs> i'm going to come to the blush and darken the blush a little bit i'm going to darken this blush over here as well um just going to darken here a little bit and right here come down to the uh, there's nothing else to darken oh right here so it gives her Alright, shape right here. Just going to. Alright, good. Nice. Alright, so that's it for the burning. I'm just going to do some highlighting now with the dodge. Going to highlight her nose. Going to highlight her forehead. Highlight her chin. And just going to add more highlight under her eye good that's it oh you know what happened now I will not be able to show you a before and after <laughs> because everything is under everything is on one layer now all right I think I need to do some more uh, all right, let's look at this before and after for the dodge and burning I think I need to soften here a little bit more with the dodge all right that looks okay that looks good but I still want to right here is kind of 
uh, I'm going to create a new frequency separation layer so I'm going to click on the background layer click on frequency separation again I'm going to put this at 6 and then I'm going to work on the frequency separation that the high frequency layer and then I'm going to click the mixer brush my shortcut for the mixer brush is M on my keyboard so yeah it's faster and to do shortcuts you go to edit and go down to keyboard shortcuts and you could uh, make your shortcuts let me show you my shortcut for the mixer brush the brush is normally under um, oh the brush somewhere down uh, I don't remember where I, oh tools yeah you have to go to tools and then for my mixer brush I use M right all right good so that's that for that portion of the image what I'm gonna do now is to all right, you know what I'm gonna do I'm going to go back to the images and I'm gonna put back this over in Photoshop I'm going to bring this to the back I'll bring this down gonna make this be the background good all right so look at the before and after before and after <laughs> so I brought back the um the before image there just so I can show the before and after good all right so the next step now is to color the image so I'm gonna do control um, control shift alt E to create a new layer and then control J to create a new layer again a duplicate of that new layer and then control alt A to go into camera raw I love using camera raw alright so I'm gonna press auto and see what auto does auto looks awesome <laughs> alright let's look at the before and then after with the auto alright good so what I'm gonna do now is to go over to the HSL adjustment and then I'm going to play with the yellows all right that's it the green a little bit that's it nothing else I'm going to go back to the contrast uh, bring the contrast to about four uh, that's too much contrast at two um, dehaze let me see yeah that looks good I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit and that's perfect all right so let's look at the before and after for the camera only that's the before that's the after you see how powerful camera is all right let me see if okay that looks good all right so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go over to the adjustment layer here i'm going to go to um color balance i always use my color balance because i want to maintain a certain look go to shadow and put 5% of color balance on it. So let's look at the before and after for the color balance. Before, after. Good. So that's it for the image. There's nothing else I need to do with this image. But I'm going to try to do, I'm going to merge everything now. Control, um, Shift, E. Merge everything. I promise that, oh, there's one more thing here that we need to remove. <coughs> but I'm not, I don't think I'm going to remove this I think I'm just going to hide it let's see if I can hide it I'm going to paint it in and get my um, brush be on the keyboard for the brush I'm going to put this at about um, 10 I'm just going to paint this in no one will know unless you guys say something yeah that's all you have to do just paint it in no one will actually know all right so i promised you guys that i'm going to tell you how to remove the chromatic abrasion there from the image what we're going to do i'm going to save the image again i'm going to save it because i'm coming from um uh what's this call again i'm coming from lightroom so i'm going to save it for lightroom now so you have to merge everything to save it in lightroom faster so i'm going to go over to lightroom and then i'm going to um 
do the changes here. All right, so I'm going to go over to the first you have to go to develop section and then come under where it says lens corrections and then go to manual and then here you should be able to remove um the um this thing right here so again it's it's normally when it's purple you could just remove it here but now it's green so it's kind of tricky how the hell do I remove this how do I remove the green all right I'm just going to use a color picker and select the green and that should actually remove the color that you're seeing that's one of the easiest way to actually do it so if you check um, you'll see you no longer have it so prominent on the image itself all right so that's it for the image but I still think I need to blend out here a little bit more hmm I'm gonna go back over to Photoshop and I'm just gonna blend update and I'm just gonna blend out um, right here a little bit more so I'm gonna go back over here I'm gonna put this at five you can play with the radius and put it at whatever number you want to put it at and see what difference it actually makes I recently found out that six actually works good with images that are shot with light like a strobe M for mixer brush and then go down here good so I'm just gonna mix it out a little bit because I think it's too bright um, so before and after good it looks smooth right now it looks really good all right good so that's it for the image there's nothing else I need to do what I'm gonna do now is to base well I'm gonna save the original image at this at the size that it is at right now the original size that came from that came from the camera and then I'm going to crop it so I just save it to um, uh, Lightroom I'm gonna export it from Lightroom so now I'm gonna save it for Instagram so what I did was to go to my crop tool which you can press C on the keyboard for the crop tool and then I selected the um, 8 by 10 and then I crop it and then I'm gonna apply my logo to it now good and then I'm going to press the Dropbox option right there because the Dropbox option is actually an action that creates, um, that sends it to a folder so I can save it to my iPhone from Dropbox. So, yeah. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope you learned something new. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. Turn on the notification bell so you can be notified once a new video has been uploaded. Follow me on Instagram at Andre Designs and stay tuned for more videos. Bye bye.